Let's go to the main menu and click Docs. Then locate the blue button labeled New and click it. Then about halfway down, locate Sentence Diagram and click it. Now when you click it, it's gonna open up a floating window. If you have multiple monitors, you may need to move it around and you may need to maximize the window so you can fully see everything. Now, as soon as the document opens, I recommend clicking the pencil icon or click on the name and giving it a label. When you do sentence diagrams, you're usually doing it off a Bible passage. So I recommend labeling it after the passage you're studying that makes it easier to locate. So we're just gonna type in Matthew 28, colon 16 through 20, and then press enter. Now, you'll see a number appear if you have any other documents labeled with Matthew 28, 16 through 20. Obviously, I have quite a few, 11. So this is now my 12th document. Now, over at the left, we have the variety of icons, shapes that you can drag over into the workspace. Up at the top, we have a series of menu options. Over at the right, we have the familiar share button that allows us to share this publicly or with another faith life individual or group. And then we have the three dots, the stoplight menu. If we click that, we can export this document as well as share it. Now let's insert a passage and work our way through this program. Let's click insert passage at the top left. Now, the first thing you want to do is make some setting changes before you put in the Bible verse. So here we can choose our Bible translation. I have the new King James version. When I click it, I get access to all my Bible translations. I'm gonna choose NASB 95. Now, very important, this next menu option makes all the difference. If we click it, you'll see we have two choices, line diagram and text flow diagram. Line diagram is for grammatical diagramming. In other words, those stick diagrams you did when you were a child in grade school. Text flow diagramming is for block diagramming. This makes a huge difference in how the text is brought into the workspace here and how you can move and manipulate the text. We're gonna do both to demonstrate. So let's click line diagram. The third option at this point is not available because we have not put in a passage. So now we're ready to put in a Bible passage. Let's type in Matthew 2, 8, colon 16 through 20. You'll notice that the Bible abbreviations work. We get a drop down menu. We can click, I'll choose the first one. And now the third option at the right is available. Now this is appearing because the New American Standard is an interlinear translation. And if we click manuscript, we can get access to the rows of information in that Bible. Now this is one additional row of information that comes along with your English translation. So if you want to diagram in Greek and English or Hebrew and English, you would choose manuscript or if you wanted to see lemma. Notice you can do the transliterated, which is the English spelling of a Greek and Hebrew word. We can include the morphology codes, the Lonida numbers, the root word, and Greek Strong's numbers. Or we can just say no alternative and don't include anything. I'm going to choose manuscript. All right, we have our passage, our Bible, the type of diagram we want, and the manuscript. Let's click insert. Now, with the line diagram, you will see that every word, every element comes in by itself. You can see the two small circles. Those are the handlers. In other words, you can click on those to connect. So for example, if I want to click on 16, I can click on 16, drag it over to the word but, and you can see as I get the two blue dots collected, a new symbol appears, which tells me they're now connected. If I move my mouse off and click back again on 16, now both move along for the ride. Now, if I want to undo that, I can simply press Control Z a couple times and that will undo it. Now let's drag and drop and connect those once again. So I'll click on the 16, bring it over. Another way to disconnect is to actually click on that symbol, the little dot with the ring around it, and then I can move it off as well. So there's a couple options there. Now notice that one of the white dots underneath the number 16 disappeared because it's no longer an independent word. So now this one white circle represents this particular phrase. And if I left click on that, I can move it around as well. So think of this as just another way to handle the object. Now I'm going to press control Z several times to undo it. 
Now over to the left, we could grab a symbol. I'm gonna grab this one. Now notice when I float my mouse, I get a little description, direct object. So if you're learning to do grammatical diagramming, this is very helpful. So I'm gonna left click on it once and then move my mouse over, the object comes along for a ride. So you don't double click to add it to the workspace, you just click once and then move your mouse and it'll be attached. Now I'm gonna work at the right side and just click and drop this. Now notice that we have, again, the line object, we have a label called direct object. Now that you can click and delete. Now you can move the direct object in there. Now I'm not gonna do a perfectly grammatically correct sentence for this training video, but I'm just gonna drag and drop so you can see how this functions. So I'm gonna left click on, but drag that over and notice as I drag closer, the white circle attaches itself to the line. So now I have my word in the location. Now, if I need to move it to the left or the right or disconnect it, I just click on that white circle and I can move it. So you have a lot of flexibility to arrange the words and these line diagrams precisely the way you want it. Now, if you wanna grab another object and connect it, we can do this as well. So I'm gonna click on the predicate nominative. Click on it once, move the mouse over to the right. Let's go ahead and just put it right below it. And now we're gonna move the object. Notice it doesn't really connect with the lines, but the dots do, so be aware of that. Now I'm gonna click on this predicate modifier once and drag that over. Now this line has a white circle, which means we can drag it right to a line and it'll connect. So be aware of that. And this is actually a little bit of a helper. It's to let you know that you're not normally gonna stick a predicate nominative underneath a direct object. And that's what it's there for, to guide you. Now, if you want the lines to be longer within these, you can adjust them. So for example, here's a dot at the right. I'm gonna left click on the dot. I can extend the line. Notice as I move it up and down, I also get that other joint to be longer as well. So there is room to readjust. And if I click this left dot, I can move it left and right. To change the height, I'm not able to do that because there's no dot to move. But this white dot I can grab, that grabs the whole object and so forth. So when you click on a dot, you'll have the option to move it around. It'll be obvious what you can and cannot do with it. Now down at the bottom, we have LTR and RTL. LTR is, is left to right. This is what we normally see in English. This is a toggle switch. So now the RTL is highlighted in gray. And notice that the objects have changed from left to right to right to left. Let me click LTR again, and you can see the objects have switched. So this makes it possible to diagram both in Greek, left to right, and Hebrew, right to left. Now over the top, we've got several other icons. We have a T icon, and if you click it once, it's shaded. And this allows us to enter text. So once we click it, we go into our sentence diagram and click it once, and then we start typing. If we click off it, there's the object. If we need to come back later and change the text, just double click on the text, and then we can begin to make those changes. It's an object like any other, so the rules that we've just explained apply. We also have a pencil icon for drawing, so let's click on that, and this allows us to do some free will drawing. That can be handy as well. Now, if we don't want the object, just press Control Z a couple times, and it'll go away. The last object is just a straight line, so we can click that, and we can draw a line at a variety of angles. But notice it's a straight line, just at different angles. Once you release the mouse, it will become situated, and then again, you can move the dots. Now, if you want to change the shape, always remember what's going on. Right now, we have a plus. That means we're still adding symbols. If we wanna change the length of this line, we must click the arrow icon. Now I can float my mouse, click on the dot, and I can change the length of the line. To delete an object, you must first select it. Once you see it's highlighting yellow, press the delete button and it's removed. Let's click on the circle or the ellipse icon and drag that here. Notice that we clicked and dropped in our workspace and I'm gonna click on one of the dots. Notice I now can change the shape so I can make it more oval or more circular, whatever fits your fancy. Let's press delete and remove that object. We have single arrows and double arrows as well in this. Now up at the top, we have the other menu items. We have page, which allows us to show the page guidelines. That's that blue 
line right there. I'm going to uncheck that and now it's gone. This is important if you intend to print out your diagrams and share with others. So that way you know what the page size is. You can control the page size with the next option. Here's top and bottom. And we have some basic margin options. Very limited though. We can also choose letter, tabloid, or A4. So we can go to bigger diagrams. And we have portrait as well as landscape. You may need to print this out several times in order to fit your paper properly. Let's click on page, close the menu. Next, let's click display. Now, earlier we talked about bringing in the manuscript. This gives us the option to make those changes and a few others. I'm gonna first check the box in formal lines. You can see at the right now that my lines aren't perfectly straight. It almost looks like it's been hand drawn. If we uncheck it, we're back to straight lines. I like having always show shape handles checked because that makes it easy to grab things. But if we uncheck it, you'll see that we lose all that. This can be important when you're finalizing your printing. Let's check that box to bring them back. Now here's where this manuscript alternate information comes in handy. I'm gonna choose alternate. Notice the English now, but when I click alternate, it's Greek. And notice that we can actually show both at the same time. I'm gonna choose primary with the alternate below. And there you go, English on top, Greek on the bottom. And we could do it the other way, where we have alternate with the primary below. We can choose primary where alternate's above. Notice that the text is changing a little bit in size. I'm gonna to switch to alternate primary above. This makes the Greek bigger and the English smaller. Let me choose alternate primary below. Greek is bigger, English is smaller. So these couple options can really help you change the presentation visually to the way you want it. Now let's go to text. Notice we've got a lot of control here. We can do fonts, bold, italic, underline, change the font, change the size, change the color and the alignment. So if you wanna bring out that maybe something's an imperative and use green, you can do things like that. All you have to do is click on the text, then go to text and choose your color. In this case, I'll choose green. And now my fonts have been changed to colors. So you have a lot of control here. Let's click the line items. Notice we can change the style, the weight, the color, as well as its ending, its endpoints. Now this line feature only applies when you draw a line. Let me demonstrate. I'm gonna click on the line icon here, go over to my layout, click once, drag to get a length of a line. Here we go. Then I'm gonna click on line. I'm gonna change it to dot. I'm gonna change the weight to heavy. I'm gonna change the color to green, and I'm gonna change the end to double arrow. If I click the arrow key at the top left, I can see that more clearly. Now that's a hard line to see. So let's change that real quickly back to a solid line. So to do this, to make a change, you must click the object first so that it's highlighted. Then click the line menu, choose solid, and now we're back in business. Wonderful. You are well on your way to creating your first grammatical or line diagram. Now one tip, if you wanna learn how to do line Diagramming, that is grammatical diagramming. There's a wonderful resource in Logos. Let me show you. Let's click library icon. Go ahead in the find resource box and type in diagram space analysis, then click rank. The book we're looking for is diagrammatical analysis. I'm gonna go ahead and click that title to open the resource and I'm gonna expand it to fill up the window. This resource will take you from knowing nothing about diagramming grammatically from beginner to intermediate to advanced with examples all the way throughout the book. So if this is something you're interested in doing, this is the go-to resource to train you through this diagrammatical analysis methodology. Let's go ahead and click the X to close this resource and let's go back to our sentence diagram. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna press Control A and I did this to show you how you can select items. Now this selects everything. I'm gonna click the white space if you drag your mouse and click it, you will notice that a square or rectangle will appear and now you can select several items. This can be a little tricky at times, but nevertheless, this is a good way to select particular items. Now I'm gonna click in the white space, press Control A for the PC, Command A for the Mac, and press the delete to remove all this information. So that's the line diagram. Let's show the block diagram. Let's click Insert Passage. All the information is there from before. But this time we're gonna click on line diagram and choose text flow diagram. 
Everything else will remain the same. Let's click insert. Let's click display. Remember, we still had alternate primary below. I'm just going to click on primary to get back to the English. Once you get that clicked, go ahead and press escape to close the menu. Now, Longos brings in the full verse range and the Bible translation. You may want to keep that. Personally, I don't. So I'm going to click on that and press delete. There's a vertical bar at the left and a vertical bar at the right. The vertical bar at the left, if you float your mouse over it, changes the icon. This allows us to move the object wherever we want. Be careful not to go too far to the left because you can hide the text behind there and then you won't be able to access it unless you do control Z. So I like to put it just to the left there near the top. The right vertical line allows us to change the width. In other words, this is the space that we're going to do our block diagram. This is important and can be helpful, especially when you have guides that you're trying to stay within a page range. So the rule of thumb is you can put it on the vertical line or just to the left of it. You want to have a little bit of space. You can play with this and print and then find out where the ideal spot is. All right, let's place it here. Now, one of the great features of the block diagram is that when you click on a word and hold down your mouse button, that's how you grab a word. So left click on the word, in this case, proceeded. Holding the left mouse button down, drag. Look what happens. Everything that follows the text comes along for the ride. So now we can begin the block diagram this wonderful text. And you can see that there. Now, one thing you can't do is change word order. So I'm going to take Jesus. Notice I can't go up above it. I can't go to the left of the word which, etc. I'm locked into the text flow. So be aware of that. Now, all the other options are still available to you. You can change the display. You can change the text, font, size, color, alignment. There are no lines in this particular diagram, so it's been disabled. But you can bring all these items over. So as you can see, this is a wonderful tool to help you block diagram if you are familiar with the techniques of block diagramming. Now let's go back to the Logos library. If you want to find resources that teach you how to block diagram, let me show you how. Let's click the search magnifying glass. Click on basic, make sure it says all text, all resources, and let's type in, in quotes, block diagram, and press enter. In a few moments, Logos will search through your library to help you find articles on block diagramming. Now, many of the block diagramming instructions are found in preaching or grammar books. Here we have 12 essential skills for great preaching. Let's click and expand that. And here is scene structural relationships. I'm going to click on the phrase block diagram. As you can see, there's other names given to this, a syntactical display, a mechanical layout. And if we scroll down, we can also see preparing the structural diagram. You can see that there are instructions here on how to diagram based on this author's perspective. There's another resource that will teach you how to do this, and that is Toward an Exegetical Theology, Biblical Exegesis for Preaching and Teaching. Now, this will focus on the Old Testament. So let's click and expand the book, and let's click the first link here, the paragraph. Now, in Chapter 8 of the resource, you can see some block diagrams with the Hebrew text. So this resource can help you learn, but again, it's for someone who's familiar with Hebrew or at least can read Hebrew text. Of course, you can go onto the internet and there's some great resources on block diagramming. But let's go back to our sentence diagram. So in closing, why would you use a tool like this? I think block diagramming and grammatical diagramming are two excellent ways to slow down and observe the structure of the text. Grammatical diagramming is a lot more work. It requires more knowledge of the original language. Block diagramming, you can do in English, but you still need to recognize the English grammar of the sentence. Well, this concludes the sentence diagramming overview video.